Hi, I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. Today we're here to talk about Dell PowerEdge R240 servers and specifically we're going to go over the CPUs and memory inside. Let's get going. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell PowerEdge R240 server. Do us a favor, if you find anything in this video useful, click that like and smash that subscribe. All right, well, let's get rolling. So first things first, this is a 1U chassis. It's part of Dell's 14th generation. Uh, as you can see in the front, it's a uh, four bay large form factor chassis and you have two different options. Some of these are actually cabled in and some of them are the hot swaps. You can either get the hot swap or the cabled. Um, if you're hoping to put NVMe into these, uh, unfortunately, this is uh, for, one, for whatever reason, the only uh, part of the 14th gen that doesn't take NVMe, at least that we've found. Uh, we tried using it in the PCIe and we tried using it in the front. Um, there's supposedly a way to do it with M.2s, but we haven't uh, been able to get that to work. So I don't think that's an actual real solution that's out there. So uh, as far as the, um, the storage is concerned, just know that going in into it that uh, you're going to be using traditional SSDs or uh, traditional M.2s if you want to put it into the riser. Um, that's just you know what you'll get with this machine. Uh, as far as the CPU is concerned, there's one CPU inside. It's an LGA1151 socket, which means you can use a couple different procs. Uh, in particular, the main two series are the Intel Xeon E2100 series and the E2200 series. Um, that's what we recommend and that's what's uh, most uh, prevalent with these, but you can also put in some uh, uh, some uh, Intel Pentium, some Celerons, and some Core i3 processors. Uh, those are also compatible with this machine. Um, so as far as uh, the procs, uh, you know, that's your options. On the RAM side, there's four DIMM slots. It takes DDR4 memory. Uh, you can use a number of different sizes. You can use 4 gig, 8 gig, or 16 gig. That's it. Unfortunately, you cannot put in 32 gigs and you cannot put in 64 gigs. Uh, the highest that you're going to be able to get to is uh, 16 gigs per slot, uh, which means the max you're going to be able to get on this machine is 64 gigabytes. Okay. Uh, as far as the speeds are concerned, you can use uh, 2133, 2400, or 2666. Um, I will note that you can put in you know, some of the higher speeds like uh, 2933 or uh, you can put in 3200, but they're just going to clock back down. Um, so 2666 is actually the true fastest for this machine. Um, as far as the types of RAM you can use, you can use one type of RAM, and that is ECC unbuffered, which is also known as a server UDIM. Uh, no, you cannot use ECC registered. No, you cannot use load reduced. The only type of RAM you can use is ECC unbuffered, which is a little bit more of a, a niche module, uh, which sometimes can be difficult to locate. Uh, we do keep those in stock if you are looking to upgrade this. Uh, we have a couple different options. Uh, in particular, right now, we have a bunch of the 2400 speed in stock uh, and a bunch of the 2666 coming in for that matter. Um, as far as the overall max that you're going to be able to get, it's going to be 64 gigs uh, via 416 gigs at 2666 with uh, ECC unbuffered RAM. So, all right, now that we know a little bit more about it, let's go ahead and pop it open. I want to show you how to actually configure it, um, you know, how to install your RAM and uh, what you'll see when you get inside. So, uh, we're going to grab uh, our ESD and be right back. All right, now that we have our ESC gear on, we're safe to open the machine. First things first, set to unlock and lift up the latch, pretty much like uh, any rack mount Dell server you've been in before. Um, so you'll notice a couple of things here as far as just uh, the back plane. Uh, you see that this is actually the, the cabled style here, not the hot swap. You'll see the air baffle, which is going to have access as far as uh, we'll need to remove this to get to the CPU and to the DIMM slots. Uh, you have then, uh, this one is specifically the cabled power supply. There is a hot, a hot swap power supply option. You know, your riser for the PCIe slots. There's um, you know, a number of things that you can do with it, but this is definitely more of a, a low-end server that's, um, you know, great for uh, hosting applications or, uh, you know, simple virtualization environments, etc. This is, um, you know, even a home lab server, this would be a, you know, a good, decent server to use. So, all right, so we're going to need to remove the air baffle. One of the things I did want to note, uh, it'll it'll say here, you know, CPU 1, and there's only one CPU, but it'll have all the DIMM slots labeled, so you'll see uh, on the on the air baffle, it'll actually say A1, A2, A3, A4, which we'll show you when we get on side as well. So you just want to lift this straight up. So when you come in here, uh, you will notice uh, that there's you know the CPU and the four DIMM slots as we discussed. So um, there are two memory channels and two DIMMs per channel, and you can tell that by the uh, the colors of the slots. So white right here is the start of the slot. So this first white one that I just pushed in is A1 and the second one, white one out here is A2, 
and you circle back around and you do A3 and then A4. So for instance, if you were only putting in, let's just say two modules, you'd want to put them into the two white dim slots, okay? Um, people ask, well, why would I want to do that? Um, as opposed to just putting them into, like, say, the first two slots that you see, um, the reason you want to do that is you don't want to just overload one channel and have it doing all the work and then have another channel just doing nothing. So you're better off to have a nice even distribution across both channels. So you put them into uh, both slots there. Okay. Now, of course, with a machine like this, personally, I recommend just go ahead and put four 16 gigs in, max it out, uh, put four eight gigs at least, um, get the most that you can out of it because, you know, this is a 14th gen server. So they are still decently expensive. I mean, not going to break your bank here or anything, but uh, they're decently expensive. And so you want to get, you know, the, the best performance that you can out of this machine. So personally, uh, I always tell people, go, with the, the four 16 gigs, okay? All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and actually um, install the modules and we'll show you how to do it. Personally, I like to do a couple of things that I think are just helpful to uh, protect the machine and to protect the modules. I like to pop open all the dim slots. It's not something that uh, you have to necessarily do, uh, but it's something that we do, again, just to protect the parts and to protect um, the dim slots. Now, the next thing I wanted to note, if you look right here in the middle of the module, there's this notch and this notch is known as a key. And that key is important because it's not perfectly in the center, it's just slightly off a little bit. So when you go to install your module, if you have it facing the wrong way, you could damage the module or you could damage the dim slot. So you just need to make sure you line it up properly when you go to install it. So in this case, it's actually gonna be like this, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and uh, slide it in, all right? And everything fits great. Now, the next thing I wanted to note is that, you know, the modules, you know, in there, I've set it in there, except for it's not actually properly seated. When you put the module in, you want to hear these two clicks. And what you hear there is you'll see this tab has moved in quite a bit compared to the other one. So the tab basically latches on to the sides of the dim slot and then pulls it down so that the leads are fully inserted into the dim slot. Um, and that's how you know you've properly seated it. Uh, we'll hear someone really pretty much every week that thinks that they have a bad dim. And in fact, what they have is just a, a, a seating error where they didn't fully seat it. And most of the time, it's it's kind of hard to tell. And I'll show you at the end once I've uh, done all these. Actually, I'll do this one next because it's A3. But when you, when you install them, it's easy to to just not put it in uh, hard enough where one of the tabs is sticking out and I'll show you right here. So it'll be like all these are fully in. That's why I always tell people too at the end, double check all your tabs are, are perfectly in, but you'll see one and I'll do it with the far outside black, right? It's just off just a little bit. And you can barely tell even, you know, on the camera, hopefully they'll, we can zoom in here, but you can, you can see it's just out just a little bit. And that little bit is enough that the lead's not fully in and you just push it down and boom. Um, now it's working and so uh, what we tell people to do is just rotate your dims around and the reason we say to rotate them around is because generally it's a seating error like that and then they rotate them around and boom that starts working right away so okay now we're going to go ahead and uh, put the air baffle back on and you can see this was a really simple upgrade uh, so if you're using this to say like your office server and you're not really you know a technician and you don't really know how to do some of this stuff honestly it's very simple uh, a video like this will make it really easy for you to do and you can see it took no time whatsoever and really you did need any tools you didn't need anything extra special to do it uh, you just needed to be able to open it up and put uh, put the dim slots in so well cool if you made it this far do us a favor click that like and smash that subscribe and if you're looking to upgrade your r240 do us a favor and email us at sales at cloud ninjas.com that's sales at cloud ninjas.com we'd love the opportunity to quote you guys we also have a a link if you want to see the uh, the products and the different compatible memory in our description section so uh, you can go there to uh, find all the different speeds and and uh, dim size options so thanks for stopping by have a good day